Hello students, welcome to English lesson. The theme of our lesson today is stress and fear revision. Please be ready with your pens and papers. Today we will read the text, listen to a radio interview about bullying and describe the pictures. During the lesson you will get 15 points for reading, listening and speaking exercises. Let's start from reading. Answer the question, please. What can you guess about the writer? So, what do you think about the answer? The writer is afraid of flying. You will read the text Learning to Fly, but first Let's have a look at these sentences. A. As soon as the aircraft started moving, though I knew it was something more. B. I woke up screaming when the pilot announced that the plane was about to land. C. My phobia has already cost me trips and new experiences, and I wouldn't let it hold me back this time. D. The first few sessions were spent becoming familiar with how a plane works. E. It works because it's something you are not used to doing, so it requires your full attention. F. It is said that about one in five people suffer from it. G. I spent the rest of the flight imagining all the different ways that could go wrong. Now look at the paragraph. Complete the gap with one of the sentences which we have read before. Let's have a look at the second paragraph. What do you think about number three? Paragraph number four. Five. Six. If all your answers are correct, you will get six points for this reading exercise. Let's check. Follow my reading. Fear of flying, also known as aerophobia, is among the most common phobias in the world. It is said that about one in five people suffer from it. In fact, it's my fear of flying that has led me here, the pilot's seat of an antique aircraft based at Springfield Air Museum. It has no working engine. The idea is that if I can learn to stay calm while sitting inside an aircraft that's still on the ground, I might in time be able to control my fear when I'm in a plane that's going to take off. The first time I set foot on the airplane was three years ago, and I was so excited to be traveling abroad that I was floating on air. I had been dreaming of traveling the world since childhood. I had some anxiety about flying, but nothing extreme. It's just first time nerves, I told myself as I settled into my seat. As soon as the aircraft started moving though, I knew it was something more. As the noise of the engines grew louder and the plane began to speed down the runway, I felt dizzy and short of breath. You know take-off is the riskiest part of flying. The man sitting next to me said cheerfully, perhaps in an unsuccessful attempt to make me better. It'll be over soon and you'll be able to relax and get some sleep. I didn't, of course. I spent the rest of the flight imagining all the different ways that could go wrong.
I had already made up my mind never to get on a plane again. Until two months ago, I kept my promise to myself. That was when a cousin of mine, who had moved to London the previous year, invited me to spend the summer with her. Faced with a 22-hour flight or a trip of four to five weeks on a series of trains and ferries, I decided enough was enough. My phobia has already caused me trips and new experiences, and I wouldn't let it hold me back this time. I went online to search for stories about overcoming aviophobia. In the end, I signed up for a special workshop designed to help people like me get over their fears. The first few sessions were spent becoming familiar with how a plane works. Then we moved on to understanding the source of our fears, learning the simple explanations behind things that to our already overly anxious minds seem like signs of impending disaster. Thanks to that, I now know what exactly happens during turbulence and why cabin lights sometimes flicker. I've also been working on various different relaxation techniques that distract you from your anxiety and reduce your stress. One of my favorites involves writing your name on a piece of paper using the wrong hand. It works because it's something you are not used to doing, so it requires your full attention. Students, as you have noticed, sentence B was extra one. Students, if all your answers are correct, score your six points, please. Now it's listening time. You're going to listen to an interview about bullying. Please listen and complete. Welcome to this special podcast from Green Hills High School. I'm going to discuss a bullying initiative with my fellow student, Josh Pikes. Good afternoon, Josh. Can you start by telling us why we're making this special podcast? Yes, sure. This is National Anti-Bullying Week and we want to make sure that all the students know and understand why this week exists. About 10 years ago, hundreds of students from around the country came together to take action against bullying. It was suggested that every school in the country participate in an anti-bullying week to raise awareness of bullying inside and outside of schools. Quite often, nothing is said about bullying in schools. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. This week is intended to keep the issue to the fore to keep school standards high and to protect student welfare. And what kinds of things will we see in our school during anti-bullying week? Hopefully we won't see any bullying. But in all seriousness, we never want to see bullying in our schools. There will be posters up on the school walls which will give people advice. We will also have lots of activities in which students can get involved. My favourite activity is the drama group one. Basically, anyone who wants to come along will join one of several groups of students in making a short play about bullying. These groups of students will have to create and perform all elements of the play. The plays will be in front of the whole school in the assembly hall on Wednesday morning, the third day of anti-bullying week. How do you think these plays will help deal with bullying? First of all, by being watched by all the students, the play will have brought the issue of bullying to their attention. The key to any campaign is raising awareness. So after the plays are performed, there will be discussions held in the PSHE classrooms. Our fellow students will be asked about their interpretations of the performances. It's a good way to start discussions about such a serious subject. It will help students to relate what they've seen to how situations really occur in the school environment. That sounds like a great plan. I hope it works. Are there any other interesting activities taking place? Yes, there will be many things happening. Students will be encouraged to submit poems into the anti-bullying poetry competition. The English department are going to give the students guidelines and ideas for writing the poems. It should be fun. I told you already that there will be posters, but there will be a poster competition too. The best poster and poem will win a prize. There are going to be lots of special shows on our school radio podcasts, but I'm sure you knew that already. There are so many things happening. I think it's going to be an exciting week at school. It's not often you hear students say that. So why do you think it will be such a successful week? 
A bullied child can feel completely isolated from the rest of the school. The effects of bullying are long-lasting on a person. You may never completely recover from it emotionally. These activities are a way for young people to share their experiences. They will help students to feel involved with their peers. Now that Anti-Bullying Week is an annual event, we hope that the school environment it helps to create will be one of tolerance and respect. All the activities this week are aimed at bringing us all together. If we can work together, have fun together, and move forward together, then there is no reason for bullying to exist anymore. Well, Josh, you've got me excited about everything that will be happening too. And for anyone who would like to find out more about Anti-Bullying Week, you can check out all the details and links on our school website. Thank you, Josh. Now, listen again and check your answers. Welcome to this special podcast from Green Hills High School. I'm going to discuss a bullying initiative with my fellow student, Josh Pikes. Good afternoon, Josh. Can you start by telling us why we're making this special podcast? Yes, sure. This is National Anti-Bullying Week, and we want to make sure that all the students know and understand why this week exists. About 10 years ago, hundreds of students from around the country came together to take action against bullying. It was suggested that every school in the country participate in an anti-bullying week to raise awareness of bullying inside and outside of schools. Quite often nothing is said about bullying in schools. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. This week is intended to keep the issue to the fore, to keep school standards high and to protect student welfare. And what kinds of things will we see in our school during anti-bullying week? Hopefully we won't see any bullying. But in all seriousness, we never want to see bullying in our schools. There will be posters up on the school walls which will give people advice. We will also have lots of activities in which students can get involved. My favourite activity is the drama group one. Basically, anyone who wants to come along will join one of several groups of students in making a short play about bullying. These groups of students will have to create and perform all elements of the play. The plays will be in front of the whole school in the assembly hall on Wednesday morning the third day of anti-bullying week. How do you think these plays will help deal with bullying? First of all, by being watched by all the students, the play will have brought the issue of bullying to their attention. The key to any campaign is raising awareness. So after the plays are performed, there will be discussions held in the PSHE classrooms. Our fellow students will be asked about their interpretations of the performances. It's a good way to start discussions about such a serious subject. It will help students to relate what they've seen to how situations really occur in the school environment. That sounds like a great plan. I hope it works. Are there any other interesting activities taking place? Yes, there will be many things happening. Students will be encouraged to submit poems into the anti-bullying poetry competition. The English department are going to give the students guidelines and ideas for writing the poems. It should be fun. I told you already that there will be posters, but there will be a poster competition too. The best poster and poem will win a prize. There are going to be lots of special shows on our school radio podcasts, but I'm sure you knew that already. There are so many things happening, I think it's going to be an exciting week at school. It's not often you hear students say that. So why do you think it will be such a successful week? A bullied child can feel completely isolated from the rest of the school. The effects of bullying are long-lasting on a person. You may never completely recover from it emotionally. These activities are a way for young people to share their experiences. They will help students to feel involved with their peers. Now that Anti-Bullying Week is an annual event, we hope that the school environment it helps to create will be one of tolerance and respect. All the activities this week are aimed at bringing us all together. If we can work together, have fun together, and move forward together, then there is no reason for bullying to exist anymore. Well, Josh, you've got me excited about everything that will be happening too. And for anyone who would like to find out more about Anti-Bullying Week, you can check out all the details and links on our school website. Thank you, Josh. If you are ready, let's check your answers together. Students, if all your answers are correct, please get your five points for listening exercise. It's time for speaking. Look at these pictures, please. Choose one picture. Use the phrases and the questions to describe it. (laughs) 
If it wasn't challenging, that is great. Score four points for speaking exercise. Now it's time to count your points. Let's make a conclusion. Today we have read the text, listened to a radio interview about bullying, and described the pictures. Well done! Our lesson is over. Thank you. See you next time.